What is up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about the National League. We're looking at every single silver. We're going to assess their chances for gold the rest of the year. Did the National League just yesterday. Hopefully, you checked out that video, found some good investments before they got too expensive. And hey, don't be afraid to check them now. People might not have pushed them all the way up in price, and you might still be able to get in and uh, earn yourself some stuff. So let's just start right away. Let's talk about the Atlanta Braves. I'll start with Chris Martin here uh, at the very top, who is kind of interesting. First off, I do want to make a quick uh, point to say that he's a good BR card. Uh, he's a really sharp reliever there in the silver tier that has a good pitch mix. I believe he has five pitches. He's got kind of everything that you could possibly want. So he's really good there. Also, he's due for a substantial upgrade that I do believe could get him to gold. So he's working the double here. Not only is he fun to use in Battle Royale, but he's also somebody that we should be holding for gold. And I think it's going to be driven by his hit rate. He's only allowed four hits in 11 innings this year. And I know that's a small sample, but that's all we have to work with this year. We got to go off of what we have. And a 62 hit nine uh, definitely needs to go up. He's also at 9.8 Ks, which is probably good enough for what he deserves. Um, but maybe could go up a little bit more. He was at 10.5 last year. So he's actually down a little bit from last year. Um, and then had 8.0 back in 2018. So he's kind of lived in that same range. 75 is probably the right number. Where I'm really keyed in on is that hits per nine being all the way down at 3.3. And even the walk rate at 92 is incredible and deserved. But he's still not walking, guys. He's allowed one walk all year this year. He allowed a whopping five last season in 55 and two thirds. So now we're going on uh, 66 and two thirds innings of a 0.8 walk rate that's that's you know obviously less than one walk per nine i think we can go even higher than 92 so i think chris martin is a strong hold for gold candidate and definitely somebody that you should be hanging on to dansby swanson i do like him i have talked about him i've, I've put him on a recommendation list more than once uh, as somebody who could go gold i think i even put him into gold one of these times i can't remember if i got him all the way there or not I'm a little bit more tepid on it right now for one specific reason, and that is the fact that he is not hitting lefties at all. He has a complete platoon split where he has an 893 OPS against righties and a 499 against lefties. And that's going to hold him back because, I mean, the card plays that way right now. The card is accurately reflecting everything that he's doing, except for maybe some more punch against righties. That's our, that's our big hope right now if we're going to get... Dansby Swanson into a gold this year, or of course, a run um, against lefties. I mean, of course, that, that would work too, but we have not seen that right now, so I'm not holding my breath. And that does have me a little bit concerned about Dansby Swanson's chances. I'm holding my shares right now, but I'm not adding to them. Shane Green's pitched well, uh, but his strikeout rate isn't good enough. And I don't think he's doing anything else at, at a level that's so exemplary that he needs to move up to gold, especially being three points away. I think generally with a reliever, it's hard if you don't have a gaudy strikeout rate to kind of get those last two, three points that you need to go to gold, unless you just have completely altered your walk and hit rate from previous seasons, which we're not seeing with Shane Green. His card kind of reflects how he is right now. I think he is one of those quintessential silvers, which I talked about yesterday, a guy who just feels perfect as a silver. Darren O'Day has pitched remarkably well this year, and it's been a little bit under the radar. He has 12.8 Ks, 2.2, 2.1 walks, 5.0 hits, and zero homers in 12 and two thirds. I do wonder if maybe he could get there. I can't remember what his season was like last year. I want to say it was okay, but shortened. Yes, he only threw five and a third innings. So it's hard to really say anything about it. He only had 20 innings back in 2018. So we're going off of small samples. Everything looks pretty right on. Although, Actually, if you look at it, there might be some walk rate boosting. Now, the thing of it is, if you add 2018 to 2020, you put it all together, it's 38 innings of work. That's not a lot, considering he used to be like a 60 inning a year type of guy. But if you do look at that, it is 1.9 walks uh, per nine in those three years combined. That's better than a 62 mark. And the home run rate uh, is 0.7. So even that could go up. So maybe... Maybe this is kind of an interesting one. I, I would say if you're going to go in on Darren O'Day, go small. But he's definitely somebody to keep an, keep an eye out for. Uh, definitely, I'm glad I did this exercise because I, he was not on my radar at all. And now he's at least got my attention. Travis Darno has had a great season. 
um, you know, 106 plate appearances, uh, a small season. But he's been awesome. He got that Tops Now card that's very good, by the way. you got to give that card a shot. Tops Now cards are amazing. He suffers from a very similar affliction to teammate Dansby Swanson and to an even higher degree. He has an 11-14 OPS against righties, which is truly brilliant and probably worthy of some upgrades here on the 75-72. However, it'll all be canceled out by the fact that he has a 267 OPS against lefties. Like if they're if they're gonna if they're gonna react to what he's doing against righties, they have to also react to what he's doing against lefties. That said, I don't quite think he gets there. Um, I think he might go to 78, 79 this week and kind of be on that cusp. But until we see something against lefties, I'm nervous. Nick Markakis, he opted back in and he's hit pretty well, but he, I don't see silver for him. He just doesn't have enough pop. He just kind of is what he is, which is a solid silver. Adam Duvall had that big three homer game that's going to be reflected in this week's update. Um, they may give him a little boost. I don't think it's going to be all the way to gold. Uh, there's four points needed there. He has been balanced this year. 834 OPS against righties, 860 against lefties. And uh, I don't know. You know, he's, the batting averages like aren't great, 253 and 273 against righty and lefty, respectively. I could see like a little boost to both. It really would have to come in the power category, obviously. And, you know, a three-homer game absolutely helps. But he did hit five homers on the week. He's been a power guy in the past. That's where it's going to come. But honestly, I think he kind of peaks at 78, 79. I would not be investing in Adam Duvall in any major capacity right now. And then Cole Hamels has been injured. No need to worry about him. Let's move on to the Marlins and talk about Pablo Lopez. Big fan of what he was going to be, uh, or, or big fan of him coming into the season, hoping that he was going to be able to kind of sustain a little bit of a breakout after showing some interesting stuff last year. And he has absolutely done that. He has a 123 whip, a 305 ERA. He's boosted his strikeout rate up to just under a strikeout per inning with 38 and 30, 38 in 38 and a third innings. And also has just nine walks. That's a 2.1 walk rate. and But 8.9 hits. And so I wonder if the hit rate is just going to continually hold him back from getting to gold. Let's see what, where it's at right now. Because a hit per inning is not very good. Okay, the K rate. The K rate could use some love. He's up to a strikeout per inning. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll round it. Come on, 8.9. Like, what's, what's the difference there? Um... And that might be enough. If that goes into like the mid 70s, that could be enough for the one point that he needs. So I am keeping an eye on Pablo Lopez. I have a few shares here, nothing crazy. I'm not going to go too crazy. I might add a couple others, peaking around 8 to 10. Um, so I have interest. And it's possible. But I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, let me grab a drink. Uh oh, my ice is all over the place there. Pardon me. Brian Anderson. This one's disappointing, folks, because I've divested in Brian Anderson. And I was really excited about him coming into the year. He got off to a great start. He started getting elevated. And I'm like, he's one good week away. That's all we need. And he's just had bad week after bad week. Uh, last week was mediocre 250 average, four, 766 OPS. But he's not getting there right now. He can still get there in the finish line. I divested because I know I can buy back in at a fair price. So he's at, you know, 240 there. Uh, it wouldn't be that hard if he starts to turn it around to jump back in. Even if I had to pay something in the 300s, you can see I have just two left. Um, I used them for some affinity exchanges. What's Yimmy Garcia been up to this year? He's pitched seven and two thirds of pretty solid ball with 10.6 strikeouts. Three and a half walks and 4.7 hits per nine. I think I need to see a little bit more than that to really put him on the firm gold radar. Um, he was okay last year, but gave up way too many home runs. Gave up 15 home runs in 62 and, two, uh, 62 and a third innings. So let's keep an eye on him. If he pitches well to the finish line, maybe. But I don't really see it. If I'm being honest, I don't really see it for Yumi Garcia. Miguel Rojas, meanwhile, 
He's been hitting really well. Um, even though he needs four points, I think we could see this. And I want to include, uh, I'll let you know that I'm recording this on Monday night. I want to let you know also that, I don't know why I started both sentences with that same exact phrase, but um, I want to tell you that four for five on Monday night with two doubles and two singles. So another four hit game, he's up to a 375 average. Let's take a look at his splits here. Let's see what we're working with. So without Monday night's game, in fact, actually, hang on, I do have a site that can get up to the minute splits. So let me call that up while we're looking here. Okay, we he's got a little bit better against righties than he has lefties on his card already. Let's see what he's doing for the year because that's going to be a big determining factor in if we're going to be able to get him there this year. Okay. Okay. He's firmly on the hold for Gold Radar. He's hitting 500, 545, 900 against lefties. 306, 432, 444 against righties. Now, it's only 22 plate appearances against lefties, but that is extraordinary. That's a little Hanser Alberto action. And the bottom line is, is that both the contact and power deserve an upgrade against lefties, even if nothing else really moves against righties. Although I think both the power and contact could move a little bit. Well, maybe not the power. 139 ISO. Yeah, 139 ISO against righties. I don't know. But a 306 batting average could move up the contact against righties at least a little bit. So I think we I think we should take a look at um, Miguel Rojas here. And you can see that the price is remarkably cheap. I've only got two. I need to change that, and I will. Miguel Rojas, firm hold for gold. Corey Dickerson is a card uh, and a player that I really did like coming into the year, thinking that he was going to be a big boon for the Marlins. He really hasn't. If we're being honest, he's he's simply been okay. And not even that. You know, 226, 294, 417. I am surprised by the, uh, by the sub 300 OBP. I mean, I guess when you're hitting that low, he's never been a huge walks guy. He's like a decent walk rate type. He's not doing that well of late. He does have a couple homers over the last week, so he does have a 740 OPS, but it comes with a 136 average and a 240 OBP, so it's it's all because of the fact that he has some power because he also has a triple. So all three of his hits in the last six games have been extra base hits, and that's why he even has a decent OPS. So no, no hold for gold there. Let's move on to the Nats. Victor Robles, I mean, the Nats in general are just a remarkable disappointment after winning the World Series last year. I don't know if it's World Series hangover or what. And Juan Soto and Trey Turner, they're doing their thing. Scherzer had a great outing tonight. He's kind of doing his thing. You know, he's not peak Scherzer. Same with Corbin. He's not been bad, but he's not peak Corbin. But everybody else, I mean, there's a few other guys. I don't, I don't need to name everyone who's doing well. But like their, their, their core stars are doing well. But that's really it. And they needed Victor Robles to be big this year if they were going to bridge the gap in losing Anthony Rendon. He has not stepped up, so he's not on the gold track. Will Harris, I thought he'd be a big piece for them. He's been okay. The 2.79 ERA probably says, oh no, he's been good. He's been fine. He's kind of skating there. First off, he's allowed six runs and only three of them are earned. And so, you know, that that's not inherently his fault if there's unearned runs. But he's the thing of it is with unearned runs, it's we take the pitcher completely off the hook. Yes and no, right? Because there was some sort of error that makes them unearned. But what about the fact that they still allowed hits after? You know, I think part of it needs to be uh, on them a little bit. But anyway... Um, a 186 whip is just disgusting, so we do not need to worry about Will Harris as far as hold for gold. Tanner Rainey is on the hold for gold track. He's three points away, and where he's really improved and I think needs an upgrade right this instant is with his walk rate. Dude used to walk the yard. Walked 7.1 batters last year per nine. This year it's down to 3.6. That's way better than a 35 mark. Now, they can't skyrocket it all the way up to like 60, 65, I don't believe, because of his history. But I do think we can push toward the upper 40s, low 50s. Now, is that going to be enough to get him three points upgrade? I, I don't know. I, I would think probably not on their own. 
That said, he also has a 3.1 hits per nine, which is probably worth better than 82. Um, and then the strikeouts are already there and excellent. So I think Tanner Rainey is a stronghold for gold. And he's remarkably well-priced to buy. So I think there's a lot to like here with Tanner Rainey. May need to get on the Tanner Rainey train myself. Adam Eaton is having a mediocre season, I believe. Not even. Actually, pretty poor. 651 OPS. So pass. Starling Castro recently got hurt for the year. He was kind of, he was basically average on the year. Um, and now he's out. So there go his chances. Jan Gomes has been, I believe, surging of late. Let me take a look. I don't know if the surge will be enough for three points either. Oh, no. Actually, he's cooled down. So he had a good week two weeks ago and then fell all the way back to a 381 OPS this past week. So I, I don't think that we need to worry about Gomes, especially as a catcher. You know, and he's in a, he's in a full-time share with, with Kurt Suzuki. So he basically has to be so good in all of his games because his playing time is so limited. I just don't see how he gets there by the end of the year. Howie Kendrick was an early hold for gold candidate, and he just hasn't done enough this year with the power. The power has really tailed off from 572 slug to a 385 this year, and it's just not working. So I don't see him as a hold for gold. And Kurt Suzuki is not doing as well as Jan Gomes and faces the same issues of playing time. That suggests to me that there's not really anything he can do short of some just overly extraordinary performance of, you know, like six homers over the rest of the season uh that he would need to get to gold so it's a no there all right moving on we're going to go to the mets they have a, a big hold for gold i believe at the very top here i think dom smith is the top right yep dom smith's at the top but you can see the market's really hot on him at 800 671 so if you haven't already gotten in on on some level uh, you've missed the boat for the most part. He leads baseball with 15 doubles. He also has seven homers and a 1043 OPS. This is uh, building upon an 881 OPS last year that he that he performed in a part-time role. I really like Dom Smith. I definitely think he's got a shot at gold this week and uh, should get there. JD Davis has been good, but he hasn't fully backed up what he did last year. Let me. I'm gonna actually open his card because I want to see where we're at with everything and what kind of splits he's had that might facilitate a jump here. Okay, now here's the problem. If, if they're going to give him attention, pardon me, if they're going to go in and give him attention and build up his numbers against lefties because he has a 926 OPS, they're going to have to downgrade him against righties because he has a 749 OPS and, and, and he has an 80 contact there despite hitting 265. So that's one of those things where it's like, okay, if you really want them to go in there and look, sure, they're gonna give you the lefty upgrades that you might want, but they're also gonna give you the righty downgrades. In the end, I think it'd be neutral, maybe a point or two there, but I don't see gold right now for JD Davis. I will say, I will point out, he is surging. He had a big week last week with a 1034 OPS. If he continues at that clip, and improves against righties, maybe he gets on the radar. Wilson Ramos. Wilson Ramos has been bad this year. That's a no-go there. Ahmed Rosario has been even worse. No, thank you. Marcus Stroman opted out. And Jed Lowry has been opting out for several years, unfortunately, due to his health. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. That was a pot shot. He's had injuries. You know, it sucks. It, Guys don't want to get injured, and so taking pot shots at them is not cool. I, I apologize. All right, going over to Philly, Reese Hoskins. I thought he might get gold this past week, um, but they moved him up to a 79. Those of you who love him as a BR god, you survived. But I tell you, he had a 1077 OPS in the past week. Let me see what he's done since the update. Ooh, he's already got two homers since the update. I don't know. I think he's cutting it real close. His price. Oh, never mind. I don't want to get too deep into this. His price is already at a level that, you know, you can't really get in right now from on the on any sort of ground floor or even a middle floor. It's at the top floor right now. And uh, if you're not already in, then don't really bother. Hector Neres has a good strikeout rate, but nothing else. 
Gene Segura. What's Gene Segura doing? Nope. Pass. David Robertson is out injured or did he opt out? I truthfully can't remember, but either way, he's not going gold. I, that I can tell you. So regardless of how it went, I can tell you that. Sir Anthony Dominguez, nope, he's out as well. Andrew McCutcheon has been getting going a bit lately, but he still has a sub 400 slug. It's not there. He would need to surge heavily to the finish line to get four points. No way. I mean, not no way, but very unlikely. Brad, uh, Brandon Workman, no. He's like Neris. He has a good strikeout rate, and that's it. In fact, they're, they're basically spitting images of one another. Zach Eflin. Zach Eflin's actually having a solid season, especially skills-wise. His ERA, pardon me, has been a little bit higher um, than, than it, he's probably deserved, given the skills. Um, but he's five points away, and I just don't see that. Jay Bruce, Jay Bruce, Jay Bruce. He is on the 10 day IL. He's been all right this year, but no, there's no upgrade. All right, moving on to the Cubbies. All right, Cubs. Oh, I didn't hit the search. You know, it helps to hit that to actually get to the team. You know, it's just one of these weird things where you actually have to complete. Oh, cool. I went, I went here. This is neat. I enjoy that. I enjoy messing up like that. Uh, looking at the Cubs, we have Kyle Hendricks, who I do put firmly on the gold train now. He had another brilliant outing today against the Cardinals, throwing eight innings of one run ball with seven hits, zero walks, four strikeouts. He's never been a big strikeout guy. We know that. But the, the, the lack of walks and, and hits are huge for him. Oh, pardon me, camera. That's what happens when you start clicking on things, trying to maneuver. Um, but yeah, so the, the, the market's kind of there, but not fully on Hendricks. There's a little bit of an investment opportunity. Maybe get a few if you're interested. I do feel like he's a strong gold candidate for this week. Not just a hold for gold for the future, but for this week specifically, especially because he has the big start on Monday night. Wilson Contreras has been all right, but not gold worthy. I guess I'll check to see if he's been surging of late just to make sure that I'm not missing a big hot streak. Okay, he does have an 1156 OPS over the last week with a, a 455 batting average. Did he do anything tonight on Monday? One for two or one for three. Hmm. Let me see these splits. Oh, this is another one of those guys, though, with massive splits. Pardon me. Yeah, I I don't I don't see it here because he's hitting 176 against lefties with a 5.28 OPS. Excuse me, uh, 2.63 average and an 8.29 OPS against righties. I think the card kind of reflects who he is, if not of being a little bit overinflated. So the big hot streak this past week is not going to do anything to really change my mind. John Lester started strong. He's been brutal lately. Uh, Kyle Schwarber has the power. But little else. His contact would have to go down. Now, here's the thing. No, I was gonna no, I was gonna make a case that doesn't really add up. Because they, they have to drop the contact on him if they're gonna go in and update this card. Because he's hitting 222 on the season. He's basically he's basically Joey Galloing, but not even to the degree of Joey Gallo. And he doesn't have the same defensive profile as Gallo. Gallo's defense is off the charts. That's why he's able to maintain gold despite the off, uh, ugly offensive profile. I don't think Schwarber can really get there with that same sort of makeup because he doesn't have the defensive profile and he's not doing quite enough with the bat. So as good as he's been, in fact, this is great for us. We want him to stay a silver. If you play BR, you already know Kyle Schwarber's a must pick. Craig Kimbrell, LOL. Dan Winkler. Nope. Walking 6.6 .6 per nine. Uh, a good 4.0 hit rate, but that's not going to be enough to get four points. And Jose Quintana just returned, didn't pitch well for six innings, and then hit the IL. So that's a GG there. Moving on. We have the Reds. Jesse Winker has been flirting with it for a while now. Um, and thankfully, they did get him upgraded. They got him up to a 78. So now he's firmly on the cusp of gold. The market went way back down after he didn't get it. 
allowing an opportunity to buy back in or to buy in for the first time, it's still there. If you want to get in on Jesse Winker, I do recommend him. I think he's one of the stronger holds for golds out there. This is despite a poor week, too. He was not very good. Uh, let me look at him since the upgrade. Since the upgrade on September 1st, he has not been good in those five games, okay? So um, it's probably not coming this week. But he's so close that I have to stay invested. Uh, I mean, I don't have to. I can do whatever I want. But I'm going to stay invested because I, I really do believe that there's a strong opportunity for Jesse Winker. Joey Votto, I wish. Remember when he started off doing some things with the power and everyone's like, he's back. The power's back. Uh, the power's back to a degree, but not a substantial degree. And he's hitting 230, so no. Moose. I think Moose is surging a little bit, but he's been so bad for the most part since he's been here uh, with Cincinnati this season in 96 plate appearances that I don't really see it. Let me, t let me t take a look just to see if he's on a hot streak yet. No, actually, he's only been a 720 OPS the last week. So now it would take like... If he goes off the last three weeks, maybe. But short of just a nuclear run, no. Nate Jones. Who? Nate Jones. No. 2.6 homers, 11.2 hits. Nope. Anthony Descofani. Oh, my God. His skills are terrible. He has a near one-to-one -one strikeout to walk rate, which you do not want as a pitcher. As a hitter, sure. But as a pitcher, good night. Not a chance. Now, we just saw Amir Garrett get upgraded into silver. He is on the hold for gold track. If he continues to pitch as well as we've seen this year, I think we'll see him finish as a gold. With relievers, it takes a while, always. And I know in the shortened season, they have to move quicker on relievers than they probably have ever wanted to. Um, I will say he does have three innings with just one hit and no walks with four strikeouts since the last update. So he's continued to pitch well. I would invest in, in Amir Garrett. I think there's some opportunity here. Maybe do like a 50% investment of what you would normally do for somebody you're super aggressive on. But um, I think there's there's some good upside here. Dang, I was going to buy that one for 288 just because it was so close. I'm going to buy I'll buy this one. You know, why not? Why not? I, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, I got it like that. Okay, I got those extra 14 stubs. I got those extra 15 stubs. Buy order, my order, dude, okay? You don't think I can afford that? Jeez, come on. Who do you think I am? I'm just kidding. So dumb, so dumb. Rysel Iglesias? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, he's smoothed out a bit. His skills are there better than anything he's doing uh, results-wise. He has a 440 ERA, but a 245 FIP. And that's because he is striking guys out. He isn't walking guys. He isn't allowing homers. He doesn't allow too many hits. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe. He's a fringe hold for gold, I'll, I'll say. I would maybe do a few token, uh, token. I would do a token investment of like 20, 10, 10 20% 20 of what you normally do. You know, so if you go, if you go a hundred on somebody, do 12, right? So it says, you go a hundred on somebody that you are in on that I'm saying is going to get gold this week type of deal. Cool. Then you do 12 or 15 for Rice Iglesias max. Cause you're going to have to wait still. I don't even think it, it would be this week. Maybe, but I doubt it. Freddie Galvis has been bad 204 average 284 obp that's all i need to say aristides aquino has not played much this year he's not gotten an opportunity to show whether last year was a fluke or not so we have no idea and pedro strope has pitched two in the third and then went back down to the alternate site or did he get covid or what no news on him huh that's bizarre anyway that's the reds winker and um, Amir Garrett are your go-tos there for sure. All right, looking at the Brewers. Let me go to the Brewers on this page here. Avisal Garcia. Now, their offense has been brutal. 
Um, Yelich has his OPS over 100 now at 109 thanks to his walk rate. Really thanks to his walk rate. Keston here is up at 107 um, thanks to his pop. And that's really it. Jed Jerko's having a pretty solid season in uh, 56 plate appearances. But beyond that, their offense has been atrocious. So the bottom line is no for Garcia, no for Manny Pena. Uh, Manny Pena's on the IL too, so it's really not happening. Corey Knebel, I believe, came back and then got hurt. Am I tripping on that or is that not correct? Corey Knebel, I don't see it. You know what? I'm going to look him up real quick. And we will talk about Adrian Hauser. Well, I do look him up. Adrian Hauser has unfortunately given up far too many hits to be a super gold consideration this year. It's just, I just don't really see it. I think it'd be a major upset that doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, Corey Kinney will, will be active from the injured list this weekend and we'll see where he's at. Okay. That could be interesting. Uh, I don't think he's going to take um, Hayter's job. And if he comes up you know, if he makes his first outing on like Tuesday or something, I don't, I don't know if they play today. Let's, let's see. Is Milwaukee playing? Just quickly eyeballing it. Doesn't look like they play until Tuesday. But if he comes up on Tuesday and he's like, and this is Corey Knievel I'm talking about, and he's lights out from Jump Street, maybe, maybe, but I wouldn't invest on it. Like this is not a, this is a gut feel that I do not like that much. I would not invest in um, Corey Knievel expecting him to get boosted. Now, Corbin Burns is somebody I would invest in. Even though he's five points away, I think there's a potential opportunity for him to get to uh, to the gold threshold. I think he deserves an upgrade into the high 70, uh, into the mid-70s, I should say. The high mid-70s, is that a phrase? No. Uh, but in that 77 to 79 range, based on what he's done thus far, particularly with the hits nine going down to 4.9. Strikeout rate can pretty much stay, and, and same with the walk rate, but I think the hits nine and even the homer nine uh, are both due an upgrade for Burns. So he's, he's pretty interesting there as far as a hold for gold candidate goes. And I guess that's it. Bra Hauser and Burns, Kniebel. So Kniebel, and Burns are your two guys to look at if you're really interested in investing in a Brewer this year. Which I am. I hit, I hit, I hit on some Brewers. So we'll see. Let's go out to the Pirates. Yes, we do have to. I know you guys are groaning at your screen. Do we have to, dude? Do we have to? Yes. Eat your vegetables. Jameson Tyon, no. Chris Archer, no. Jacob Stallings, I don't think so. You know, he's been an interesting story with how well he's hitting. And it's really um, it's really due to the batting average. You know, he's hitting 293 with two homers, four doubles. And he, he like, I don't know. I don't think I really see it for Jacob Stallings because he's got that big platoon split too. I think 381 average against lefties is already reflected in his contact rate. Especially because it's 27 plate appearances. You can only go so far on such a small sample, too. Let me let me pull it up. Let's take a look. Let's do our due diligence. I don't want to throw it out completely. Because he has such premium diamond defense that we don't need much offensively to get the consideration. Okay, 65. I would say that as he continues to maintain against lefties, this could inch up into the 70s. But right now, that's only going to do a couple points of damage. What we would really need, if, if you are a Jacob Stallings believer and you've invested in him for some reason, maybe because he's super cheap, but if that's the case, then you should just be rooting for straight power. Just home runs and, I, you know, I guess doubles too, um, but really homers, 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 homers with Jacob Stallings because that's what's really going to get him there if he's going to go. Josh Bell, oh man, Josh Bell, N no is the answer, but... What a bad season. 197, 273, 303. Horrible. Kevin Newman. Newman. Also terrible season. So neither of them deserve any consideration for gold right now. So I'm not even going to waste y'all's time. All right. Moving on. Our last team in the central are the Cardinals. And let's see where they are at. 
By the way, I think I'm pacing. I don't. I'm. I'm I know I'm jinxing it now, and I'm going to take like two two hours on the rest of these teams. But I think I'm pacing to a uh, a much quicker video than the AL one, just because I'm I'm cutting. To, I'm trying to cut to the chase a bit more. I feel like I got a little rambly on some of those yesterday uh, with the AL. That was like, okay, you could have said that in half the phrasing. Paul DeYoung. I am very surprised that the market is is pretty reasonable on him right now in that you can get in and actually get in uh an investment here that could pay off handsomely he's crushing it over the last week 938 ops with two homers he has a 945 ops over the last 14 days and an 882 over the last month so the bottom line is he's been playing well paul de young has and i think it's time to consider him for gold i'm actually going to have him as a gold upgrade in my uh weekly sheet and like I said, the market's saying you can still get in. The water's warm. I think I put in a few bids here. Let's see. Come on. Come on, Paul DeYoung. By the way, the other Paul, Paul Goldschmidt, he's got to become Paul Diamond Schmidt, doesn't he? Yeah, I've got seven. You know, I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to stick with that with Paul DeYoung. Um, I, even though, actually, I do feel pretty good in him. I might, I might up that a little bit. I might up that a little bit. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't want to do something like, no, that's all I'm getting, and then you guys kind of follow suit on that, and then only find out that I have like 25 of him. So I'm gonna tell you guys, I may jump it up to like the 11 to 15 range, um, just a handful more shares, nothing too crazy for Paul DeYoung. Colton Wong has been good of late, but his, I think his season totals are too small to really earn him a gold. Um, a gold consideration. He has zero homers. Tommy Edmond. Let's see what Tommy Edmond's doing. Tommy Edmond. No. No. 263, 320, 377. It's not there. Miles Michaelis has been hurt. No. I don't see him. Wait. Did he opt out? I, oh, wait. Michael has opted out. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Michael has opted out. Carlos Martinez has been back, but he's oh no, he's back on the IL after three and two-thirds brutal innings, so no. Adam Wainwright, here's the thing. Go look at what I said about Dallas Keuchel, and that's just apply that to Adam Wainwright. The bottom line is uh, there's just not enough juice for him to get there. Like uh, the, the Where he can improve... Um, He's unlikely to do so, which is primarily the strikeout rate. Thus, it doesn't leave enough heat to actually get him there. Yeah, because, I mean, that's at a 55. He does have a nice 6.9 strikeout rate, but I don't know. I can see another two points, maybe even three, get him 79. But the gold, I don't see it. And then maybe if he has two big strikeout outings, we reassess. But the likelihood of that is small, so I would not mess around with Adam Wainwright and try to be like a sneak sneak investor just because he's cheap. If you want to buy him cheap because he's a 76 who costs that little for affinities, go ahead. But otherwise, don't hold your breath on gold. Harrison Bader, no. No. He was hitting the ball pretty hard to start, um, and it, it's still showing. He's got an 891 OPS, which is pretty good. But he's only hitting 240, and I believe he still has the vast platoon split that we've seen in past years where he can't hit righties at all, and he crushes lefties. Let me see if that's accurate. Yes, 680 OPS against righties, 1859 against lefties. But that's only 11 plate appearances, plate appearances against lefties, so I don't even think that they can boost it up that much. They can move the contact and power up a bit, but not enough to get four points, I don't think. I think he peaks out at like a 77, 78 for Harrison Bader. That leaves Dakota Hudson, who has certainly been better with his strikeouts this year, um, as opposed to just kind of living on the ground balls. I'm going to say no on Dakota Hudson, though. I don't think there's enough to get five points. John Brebbia, I believe, is hurt. Let me take a look. Brevia, Brevia, Brevia. I'm just going to do a quick F5. Wait, did he get TJ at the start of the year? Is that what I'm remembering now as I'm typing him in to look up his injury news? I think, th I think that's what happened. 
TJ. Back in back in June. Bingo. Get well soon, bud. All right, moving out west. Arizona Diamondbacks. What have they got going? Madison Bumgarner. Woof. It has been so bad. More like Badison Bumgarner. Got him. Or Badison Mumgarner and just do the spoonerism. Okay, yeah, I'll leave. I'm sorry. I really should. But uh, no, no, don't worry about Madison Bumgarner in any sort of investment whatsoever. It's a waste of your time. Merrill Kelly was tracking toward gold. But he hit the 60-day IL with a pretty severe shoulder injury. Um, I don't think they're going to give it to him. I think he's going to live at the 79 and just kind of be there. And that's unfortunate because he was having a great season. Eduardo Escobar has had a pretty brutal season, so he's a no-go. David Peralta, he's on the cusp because if he finished strong, sure. Um, he did hit a homer on Monday night. I actually just saw it out of the corner of my eye about five minutes ago. So if you saw me look up there, that was David Peralta hitting a home run. He's platooned up pretty heavy, though. Um, almost a 200-point split at 753 versus 556. No, I don't think I'd. I don't think I'd even invest in David Peralta. And I love him. I'm always. Uh, I've been rooting for him for a couple of years now in in baseball, and then I always consider taking him as a batting average gain late in drafts. Now he's hitting 280 on the year, which that's still pretty good though. You don't usually find 280 late in drafts. Nick Ahmed, big fan, but. But no, I mean, he has an 81 OPS plus this year. It's not happening. Christian Walker is very much on the hold for gold train. Um, he's still four points away, so it's going to take some time. Uh, maybe gets a small upgrade this week into the 78. So then he only needs two points for the gold. But man, we kind of, we've kind of seen a role reversal too, where he has an 863 OPS against righties and a 757 against lefties. Actually, that's not a role reversal. I forgot his card does already reflect quality versus righties, mediocrity against lefties. That's the tough thing about getting him to gold then because his card already reflects what he does. So there's not a need for any major alterations. Um, he's a consideration, but a low tier consideration. I'm, I'm talking 12 to 15 percent of your of your normal bid is what you should put in on walker right now but also monitor him put a little star and keep an eye out on arizona games when you start to see him string together some power hits maybe that's when you jump um with christian walker carson kelly i can't i can't show these stats on stream they're so bad or uh on a video it's not a stream but yeah 187 238 293 so bad. Caleb Smith just joined the team there from uh, Miami. He's got an outside shot. He'd have to be great. I think the pitchers who are four or five points away have a better shot than the hitters. Um, all thing, all else being equal because of the major surges that they can have. I mean, hitters can too, but with pitchers, it only takes like two brilliant starts, like just off the chart starts to really get people interested in moving them up. With hitters, you got to string together, what, a week plus uh, before you can really start considering things. Daniel Murphy, where have you gone with your gold? My goodness. Everything looked like it was falling into place for him. Instead, now he's at a 666 OPS. That's not great. That is, that is, let's ask Pete. Not great, Bob. All right, he's right. He's right on that. When, when you're right, you're right. Pilar moves over. He's a recent Rocky addition. He does have an oh, eh, excuse me. He does have a 111 OPS plus, which is solid. You know, he he, he can um, do some decent things for them, but that's that's two guys playing similar position there with uh, Pilar and Tapia. I don't know. I wouldn't invest in Pilar. I would invest in Pilar in fantasy because he goes to Coors. He runs a little bit and, uh, you know, he can hit for a little punch here and there, especially with what the park can do. But I would not invest in him for MLB The Show. Michael Givens, no way, Jose. Dude doesn't. Oh, never mind. I looked at the wrong category uh, column. 
I was looking, I thought he had zero strikeouts on the year. Now, he only has two, but it's only because he's pitched two and two thirds. And he could flip that around. Um, you know, like I don't want to freak out over a 675 ERA in two and two thirds, but I just don't think the skills are there um, to really get Michael Gibbons to gold. John Gray, absolutely no way. He's on the IL, though. Get well soon. And David Dahl. Dahl's on the IL. They shouldn't do downgrades when guys are on the IL. I think that's that's a bit of a, a reprieve there that you get to kind of live and not have to be judged while you're on the IL. All right, let's move out to LA and talk about the Dodgers. I think they got a really, really, really strong gold candidate here off rip, and that is Tony Gonsolin. He has been insane. He has an 076 ERA and an 072 whip with nine and a half strikeouts, 1.9 walks, 0.4 homers, and 4.6 hits. It's time, how's he not getting it this week? I, I'd i be floored. David Price opted out, uh, Max Muncy. Max Muncy's been, eh, he's been okay, but no. Pardon me, I should mention, pardon me for the drink, but also pardon me on Muncy, I should mention that he was gold so he'd be trying to get back, uh, but I just don't see it. Julio Urias, uh, you know, he's on the cusp. There are some upgrade. There, there is some upgrade potential with him, like right, right now, a little bit. But I don't think it's enough for two points. Let me take a look. Well, you know what? I'm kind of assessing it here. Maybe not. Because I think his K9 could go up a little bit, but his his hit nine would go down because he's at 8.9 hits per per nine innings. So yeah, I think he is is what he is. Julio Urias deserves to be a, a 78 right now, um, unless he really shows out and does something to improve his stock. AJ Pollux played quite well in a prominent outfield role. He's um, Accumulated 143 plate appearances with eight homers. Wow, two of them in the last week uh, with a 1087 OPS. Let's see how he's been doing since the update, since September 1st. Small sample, but still, both of those homers are in that time. And in that time, he's also hitting 389. I do think AJ Pollock is somebody you have to give very heavy consideration to um, if you're talking about a gold potential here. And let's see here. Now, he does have a reverse platoon. He's still rocking, or not reverse platoon, just a straight up platoon where he crushes lefties. He's not as good against righties as a right-hander. He's still maintaining that though. So I don't know. I think the verse lefty does need to go up and maybe the verse righty power can stand to go up a little bit. Is that going to be enough? He's only two points away. We need. Yeah, I see a five-star inside edge here. I'm going to have to go into the game, check what that five-star inside edge does, and see if it puts him out of go. I mean, five-star almost always does, but sometimes like a five-star for some reason is only worth like six, seven points. Maybe that's maybe that's if they have like a remarkably difficult opponent or something like that. But I don't understand. All right, moving on. We have. Gavin Lux, I don't think he's played enough. I mean, I know he hasn't. So I'm going to say no on Gavin Lux. Kike Hernandez has done nothing since that uh, electric start that ended up getting him a Tops Now card. By the way, just to close the loop on Lux. He's hitting 148. Young Jock, the batting average is just too horrendous. You can't finagle five points there. Mm, I'm sorry, I'm looking here at Will Smith. He's interesting because his OPS plus is extraordinary at 164. A lot of it is built off of his walk rate. He has five more walk, walks than he does strikeouts, 16 to 11. That is so good, even in a small 78 point appearance sample. Like he knows what he's looking for. And if he doesn't get it, he's spitting on it. I don't know. This is a tough one. I would say 
20, 25% of your normal investment. The price is right though. Here's the thing. I'm going to bump that up to 30, 35%, maybe even 40. I know it's, I'm, I'm just adding. Well, okay, we'll call it 40. We'll just call it straight 40 because of the price. It's so cheap that your risk is mitigated by that. And uh, let me see what a splits look like again. What, what, what were we dealing with? 1077 OPS against righties and a 652 against lefties. Yeah, the card kind of already reflects that. Yeah, okay, I'm going back down again. I'm all over the map here with Will Smith. 30%. If you want if you want to do the investment in Will Smith, do like a 30% of your normal investment. Okay? That, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with him. All right, Chris Taylor has been up and down, I believe. Yeah, he's been he's been all right. He's had a good season, but I don't think there's five points there. And then Caleb Ferguson recently just got to silver. I think he would need a couple more great weeks. Maybe gold by the end of the year, but I don't know. I'm not really investing. His home run rates off the uh, off the charts too, 2.2, because he's allowed four homers in 16 and third innings. His hit rate's pretty mediocre. Uh, and then the walks and strikeouts are nice. I don't know. I'd be more inclined if I were going to invest in him at, at this very low price here, it would be with team affinity in mind, not with trying to make stubs. All right, Padres. Let's see what the Padres got. Oh, no. I clicked the Giants, not the Padres. So with regards to the Padres, one thing that I would say is that Jake Cronenworth, if I'm going to say he's a set hold for gold, I know he's not uh, until third on the list, but he's one point away. I think his offense alone could get him there. But if they upgrade the defense and speed as they should do for both, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a huge Cronenworth fan, I'm saying this because it's legitimate. If they do that, he's obviously an easy gold. And he strikes me as one of those guys that if he does get those gains, uh, his sprint speed is actually ridiculously great. And his defense is strong, and uh, his card does not reflect that. But if he gets those gains, I think we could see a move up to like an 82, instead of just in, you know, just inside the gold barrier at 80. I think we could see something that starts to put him on at least diamond consideration, which I don't think he would get. Nor is he deserving of it. Like to be a diamond after what 200 plate appearances is all he'll have by the end of the year. So, um, but I do like I do like Cronenworth for gold. Get that fielding, get that speed updated. Please, SDS, that'd be huge because it's deserved. Now, going back to the top, Austin Nola is an absolute hold for gold candidate. We've been talking about him for a whole minute. And um, he has not slowed down with his new ball club. He hit a homer very early as a 1018 OPS over the last week. Hold your Austin Nola shares, maybe get a few more. I mean, he's certainly priced to buy. Anytime there's somebody that I have high confidence in gold in, uh, in getting gold in for that particular week, especially, and they're under 400, pff, that should be that should be such an automatic buy at that point. Not that I'm an end all be all. I'm just saying if you if you're watching enough because you believe in in what I'm doing and the confidence ratings that I have, then that would tell you that there's a lot of value there for um, Austin Nola. Oh. Fernando Tatis got hit in the forearm coming through. Actually, that would be... No, no, it was this forearm right here. Looked super painful. Hopefully, it's all right. Yikes. They they can ill afford... Baseball can ill afford to lose that. That would be a freaking nightmare. Uh, Will Myers has been killing it. He, I believe he just got moved up to 79. So, he would need to stay hot to uh, to get to gold. But I believe in him. I, I actually believe in Will, Will Smith. Will Smith. Excuse me. Will Myers. I knew... My brain said, don't call him Will Smith. My mouth said, nah, I'm already doing it. I'm already there. Sorry, I have to do this. Um, Will Myers, I do believe in him a bit. Um, I'd put like a 30% kind of upgrade or uh, investment in on him for sure. Mitch Moreland is prototypical platoon. He's only hitting against righties. Now he's been so good that it doesn't matter, but that's all he's doing. In fact, in his first 17 plate appearances with the... Padres he only has two hits so no Zach Davies makes for an interesting candidate given how how well he's pitched this year I do wonder though if he's pitched so prototypically to what he usually does that maybe the card already reflects everything pretty well let's take a look though let's take a quick look 
Okay, the strikeout rate's fair. Absolutely. The um, Oh, pardon me. I was looking at the hit rate at 76. Um, yeah, the hit rate's pretty fair at 76 as well. Maybe a, maybe a couple points. 78, 79, maybe. Maybe. Now, he has put his strikeout rate up a bit from 7.8, or from 5.7, excuse me, to 7.8. That tells me that the Ks could go up a little bit. Maybe something into the mid-60s for his K rate. But they can't go crazy there just because it's an improvement. And 75 BB9, that's good with what he's doing. And yeah, I, I'm i going to say no on Davies. I'm, I'm going to say no. Um, it's close. And if he puts up another great start, I know we'll lose some of the potential equity there. But I don't know. I just I get so nervous about guys who who just put the ball in play so often they don't really have that dominance. Drew Pomeranz was a big hold for gold candidate for me. Then he got hurt. Well, he's still he's still killing it. Now he's back. Um, I believe he's assumed that closer's role. With Well, actually, it's, it's kind of a split deal because he's the lefty, um, and he hasn't gotten a save since he's returned. Well, that's a that's a huge lie. He got a couple. But um, since since Trevor Rosenthal got there, I guess I should say. Oh, wait, no, this is where his IL stint was. Never mind. I am right. He hasn't gotten one since he, he returned. But he's back to doing well. He has three, uh, three innings with five strikeouts um, since returning. Also two hits and two walks. So he's a, he's a hold for gold, though. I had divested in him because he got hurt, and I just was too nervous. Now that he's back and he's so fairly priced, I'm going to get – I'm going to reinvest. In fact, I think I'm going to get some shares cheaper – now that he's a 79 than I did when he was um, like, what, 75 or whatever. Where did he come up from this year? Did he come up from a bronze? Actually, I'm not, I'm not going to look it up. It takes too much time. Or, I, mean, I meant to say um, low bronze. Of course, he came up from a bronze. Well, actually, no, that's not, it's not guaranteed that he came up from a bronze because he was bad until he got to Milwaukee last year. Anyway, I'm, again, this is where we cut time. We're rambling too much on something that does not matter for Drew Pomeranz. Uh, Emilio Pagan has not been good enough to get any consideration, and now he's on the IL, so that's a piece out there. Trent Grisham has absolutely obliterated righties to the highest degree, but he does nothing against lefties, and I bet his card reflects that. Let's see. Yeah, I just don't really see it, y'all. Everything that he does is kind of already on this card. So, unfortunately, no. And then Trevor Rosenthal, the aforementioned, has been excellent. And, you know, he's hit the ground running with his new club. Three innings, no runs, five strikeouts. Yeah, I think he's a hold for gold. Um, be careful, though. He, only, he needs four points and he's a reliever. And I told you how they're stingy on relievers, and I get it. And he doesn't have anything to fall back on because he's he was recovering from injury uh, previous to this bust out here. He missed 2018. He was bad in 2019, and he's been great this year. So that's like a 10% token type of deal as far as just get a little bit of Trevor Rosenthal just in case. Joey Lucchese, no way. Matt Strom. Probably not. No, he doesn't strike out enough guys. No, I don't think so. Not, not with five points needed. And finally, the Giants. Let's see what we've got with them. The Giants have Buster Posey, who's not playing, so he's a no-go. Evelyn Gory, who's been good. Um, they Their offense has actually been quite strong overall. But... I don't know how many investments it's going to yield. Our boy Mike Kostremski already got there. Alex Dickerson, who at least does well against righties and had that big three homer game. He was kind of taking off. Got hurt tonight, followed the ball off his leg, had to leave the game. I don't know how se severe it is. Brandon Belt might be the opportunity for some gold. He's at 76, though, so he's four points away, and I believe he has that heavy platoon split. Let's take a look at his card. Now, he has put up an 815 OPS against lefties, but it's built on the strikeouts, the fact that he has four in 17 plate appearances because he only has two hits. Yeah, I don't know. Now, I, I, I don't think there's four points here. That's all. I think he's more of a 78, 79, and then we kind of go from there if he, if he sprints to the finish line. But right now, no. 
no thanks from from Brandon Belt. Maybe a couple investments. Maybe you know, maybe a little bit of um, maybe maybe a few shares bought of him, but that's really it. Wilmer Flores has also been pretty good. I believe he's kind of flipped his little platoon on its head, though. Let's see. Mm, he's been known as a, as a lefty killer in his career, and his card reflects that as well. And so does his season. 1038 OPS against lefties, 804 against righties. Now, the 804 against righties is a nice little improvement. There is some punch there, but not enough to really get the power versus righties boosted. And the 298 average is probably not high enough to get a substantial boost in contact against righties, if at all. I'm going to say no on Wilmer. All right, next up is Donovan Solano, who's been a massive breakout. If you haven't used his Diamond Tops Now card, I recommend you give it a shot. I've had a lot of fun with that card. Um, he's got a 147 OPS. He just continues to hit this year. He, he hit that walk-off to get the Tops Now card. He's been fantastic. Let's see. Um, I don't know. I don't know, like... There's not really any power here, and that's what would drive it. Maybe a little contact love against lefties. Because he is hitting 333, and I mean, but 86 is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. He needs five points. No, I think we just enjoy the fun year that he's had, moving into silver, becoming kind of a random breakout, and then getting that tops now. And then Jeff Samarja... How dare you even ask me? He should be mega prestige. No, he's on the IL, uh, suffered after three bad starts. and No, just a full no. Anyway, that is the National League. Let's see what time looks like. Just over an hour. Wow, look at that. So there you go. About two and a half hours of commentary on all the silvers in the American and National League. And hopefully you've got some guys that you want to go invest in. That, uh, that you think will get upgraded this week. I'm excited to see what happens with the upgrade. If enough things come through. If, 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 if. I'm getting Casey Mize. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hit a like, hit a subscribe, please. And stay tuned for more uh, MLB The Show content coming up, including this week's update video, which will be out probably on Wednesday night or Thursday morning. It really depends. This trip to my mom's is, uh, you know, a bit of time in my week that is, is going to be well spent. I need to go see her, but we'll also kind of uh, put a few things in limbo with regards to um, work and whatnot. But again, not complaining about having to go see my mom. So anyway, thank you again so much for watching. Take care. Peace.